Hey, what's going on everybody? Ken Coco here with Remax, your friendly realtor in Sherwood Park and Edmonton and area. And today I'm gonna to be going over how to sell a home in six easy steps that I'm gonna be getting into later on. All right, let's dive into the six steps that I've broken down on how to sell a home in Edmonton and area. Number one, you're gonna to wanna to check with your lender and see what your options are. If you're purchasing a new home, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're pre-approved for that price of that new home that you want. And also you wanna check if there's a pale penalty. Depending on the type of mortgage you have and in the fine print, there's gonna be a pale penalty to break that mortgage early. Hopefully you don't have a big one. I've seen some pretty big pale penalties, upwards of over $10,000. So this is a huge step to take. Also, if you wanna rent your property, your lender is gonna be a great resource on what to do with that. You can either pull out some equity, you can refinance it and yeah, pull out some money for the down payment on your new home. Number two, you're going to want to call your realtor, hopefully me, and your realtor is going to come over. They're going to do an evaluation on your home, see the condition that it's in, take notes uh, if you've done any renos or what needs to be fixed. And they're also going to go over statistics of the market, what uh, comparable homes are selling for that are similar to yours. And uh, yeah, they're going to really create a plan to maximize your success, which ultimately maximizes the amount that you can sell your home for. Number three is marketing. And it is so crucial in today's market. And the reason why it's so crucial is because I'm sure you've done it yourself. When you want to see what's on the market, you go, you hop on realtor.ca and you start scrolling through what's available. And you can tell right away the, ho the houses that have photos that are professionally done and the ones that have taken on a cell phone. They're at a bit of an angle. They're blurry. You might even be able to see the realtor or whoever took the photos in the mirror. To me, that is not professional. And you're going to want professional photos, like the best of the best for your home, for it to be able to sell for as much as it can, because you want the potential buyer to see it and fall in love with it, call the realtor, book a showing and come and see your house. But if it's not looking as good as it can and it doesn't have a video that matches that style of photography and shows how beautiful your home is, I don't think you're going to be selling for as much as you potentially can. So that is so vital. Make sure that the realtor you choose has incredible marketing. Yeah, don't miss out on that. Number four, your property goes live on the market. And this is a massive moment because your baby is now out there for the world to see. All these potential buyers are now clicking on your house and it's exciting. They're going to be calling the realtor or calling the listing agent and booking showings to come see it in person. And most of the time, these are going to be private viewings. You're going to be out of the house because that just creates complications and makes things awkward. So you want private viewings for your home. And most of the time, they're hour long slots. They're there with their realtor and they're taking a look to see if this is the house for them and they can see themselves living here for a long time. Now, while you're live on the market, your realtor is going to be able to see all the analytics on realtor.ca plus on their MLS program. They're going to be able to see how many people are viewing it, you know, see how many people have favorited it. And this is huge because then this is how you gauge the amount of interest that you're getting on your house. And it's ever changing. Every day is going to be different. And usually from the, what I've seen out of all the properties I've sold, you get the most interest in the first week. And after that, it goes down and it keeps going down and down and down. And the only time that it kind of picks back up again is if you adjust the price and all of a sudden you get an influx of buyers that are looking at it again. And so that's why you want to follow the advice of your realtor and go with the price that they suggest because because if you shoot for way too high, it's gonna hurt you in the long run. And you'll be that house that sits on the market forever. And people are gonna think that you there's something wrong with it. And that's not what you want ultimately to make the most amount of money that you can on your investment. All right, number five, a buyer has fallen in love with your property. Hopefully multiple buyers and you get into multiple offers, but let's just talk about one buyer for right now. That buyer is gonna write an offer on your property. And usually the most common conditions you're gonna get are financing and property inspection. You probably went through this when you purchased your house too, or this exact house. And so usually the length for that is going to be about seven to 14 days for them to satisfy those conditions. If it's a condo, you're going to have a condo dog review condition. And if it's an acreage, you're going to have a water and septic inspection. Those are very important for acreages because uh, those are major ticket items for maintenance and cost a lot to replace. And buyers don't want to be getting into a property that's going to cost them a ton of money right off the hop. So while the buyer has this one to two weeks, depending on your property, they're working on getting the full financing approval, doing their inspection, whatever other conditions they have. Have, getting that much closer and closer to being sold. Number six, the property is now sold. This is, it's pretty much party time. The buyer is happy with the conditions. They remove them, making the sale final. This is a huge moment, especially if you're buying a new house and it was subject to the sale of your house. Now you can go ahead and remove conditions on that house if you're happy with all those conditions. And uh, yeah, so between now, time of being sold and uh, possession date that the 
the date that the buyer negotiated, you're gonna start packing up. You're gonna call your service providers, let them know that you've moved, when to cut off power, gas, all that stuff. And your insurance company, you're gonna let them know. And your lawyer is gonna be reaching out to you and booking an appointment to meet up with them and sign all the papers. So that's it. Those are the six easy broken down steps on how to sell a home in Edmonton and area. And obviously there's a lot more to it from step one to step six. This is just a brief overview. I hope it helped you. I hope it answered any questions that you might have. If you have more questions or you've been thinking about making a move, I'd love to help you out. My number is down below. You can just shoot me a text or give me a call anytime. I'm always available to help. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. Talk to you later.